Hey creative friends, I'm Robin Randolph and I want to welcome you to Art for Healing and Joy. Be sure to watch all the way to the end because I have a little free bonus gift for you at the end of this video today. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made these homemade mark making tools from my kitchen junk drawer along with found objects I found in nature and how you can do that too to create fabulous marks for your artwork. I'll show you how I use those tools to paint on fabric to create this new textile and mixed media series that was inspired and created as a result of taking a fabulous online course with the world-renowned textile and mixed media artist Shelley Rhodes. I just want to take a moment to share Shelley's beautiful book with you. And I am so thrilled right now that I get to take a online course with her through Fiber Arts Take Two, which is a fabulous company that's producing beautiful, amazing online art courses with renowned artists. So Anyway, if you can't take the course for whatever reason, you can purchase her book and I'll put the link for this for to, where to get it in Amazon down in the description below. But anyway, let's have a quick look at it. Beautiful book in here. I mean, oh my gosh, this, her work is stunning and super creative and innovative. And yeah, I just can't say enough about this book if you're at all interested in combining mixed media with textiles. It is just chock full of ideas and methods and practical information. It's a must have if you're at all interested in this type of art. So anyway, just a quick little flip through here. I'm sitting here with my feet up in my recliner by the fireplace, just loving this. I read this first thing in the morning and last thing at night, it just gives me so many great ideas. And it is a great chronicle or synopsis, really, of the course I'm taking with her. So if you can't do the course, this is the next best thing. This gives you a little idea of what inspired this video and today's art. So if you are new to my channel or you missed my last video, Artist Block Breakthrough, you might want to go watch that first because that in that video I share how the process began for me after I joined her class and just the breakthrough I had and that I went out on this nature hike and in, in just adventuring, my husband discovered a big... Of surprise which was unearthing this rusty old kettle which we brought home and then I used that to dye fabrics and I'll show you a brief synopsis of that right now. First I immersed the rusty kettle in a bucket and got it completely wet on all sides. I rinsed muslin fabric in water and then I soaked it in vinegar. Then I wrapped the vinegar soaked cloth around the kettle trying to maintain contact to the fabric as much as possible. And then I put all of that inside of a plastic bag and let it sit for a couple days. And to be completely honest, I have to say that after giving it a go two different times, there was kind of a weird vibe to this kettle and it really didn't come out the way I had hoped. It was a bit underwhelming. I used it anyway though, and I'll show you how I painted on that using the, the tools I made. But later, a couple days later, I ended up finding a great little r rusted antique, kind of at an antique store, uh, old um, like plowing tool. And I used that and I got really great rusty colors and marks so it all worked out. Now let's explore the possibilities of mark making with homemade tools and found objects. First I scavenged some bamboo sticks from our yard to use as the base for my tools. Have a look around in your environment to find sturdy sticks for this. 
Next, I headed straight for the kitchen junk drawer and I scrounged up those rubber bands plus some bag ties. I got the idea to use the scouring pad from Shelly's course and that is a fabulous homemade tool right there thanks to Shelly Rhodes. With a little duct tape, I was good to go in just moments. Nothing fancy, but all three of these tools make amazing marks, which I'll show you in a moment. But before we go there, let me show you all the other things I collected together to use for making marks, either from found objects or things around the house. Not sure when or how I'm going to use these coffee filters, but I know there's going to be some creative thing to do with these, so I let them dry out. And here I saved my Prime Amazon packaging because you can use the edges. They're great for making marks. Bubble wrap is always a good way to make little marks as well. And this ridged cardboard was the outside package for my toothpaste. These are galls from an oak tree and they might be really fun to dip in ink and use. Also, I've got some feathers I could use for writing and making marks. And an acorn, even just rubbing it here on my page makes some little acorn colored marks. This little pod is a great shape. And of course, sticks and twigs are always great. Here's my little rubber band tool that you can just dip in ink and drag across the page and on the bamboo stick. And then, and as I mentioned earlier, the scouring pad makes a wonderful tool and great marks. And I was so surprised to find how these little bag ties make great marks too. And you can, they're, they're flexible, so you can kind of change their positioning, which is great. You can dip the ends of bamboo into ink and get great round marks. I'm going to begin here using the muslin cloth I used with the rusty kettle. And I'm using the oak gall and dipping it in some diluted ink. So I just took ink and I put it in a little plastic container with a little bit of white and black ink and water. And I'm just making some lighter gray marks first. Right here I'm using a pine cone and I will link for you in the description below the inks that I used. Here I'm using the shell of an acorn. And here I'm using the round acorn. And next up is the top of a poppy seed pod. I'm dipping it in diluted black ink and it makes great little marks. Back to the acorn. Now let's look at using my bag tie tool and the marks that you can make with that. Here's what happened when I used the scouring pad tool with ink on paper. Here I'm using it on top of Yupo paper that I'd already made some painting with using watercolors. And the rubber band tool was surprisingly really, really fun. In a minute, I'm gonna show you the art that I created after doing all of this. But right now I wanna show you, I'm using the bamboo to make little marks as well. And now the scrubby tool on the fabric and then also using the bag tie tool with a little diluted burnt umber. So these marks that got created, I then used to create the background for the actual art piece series I created, and I'll show that to you in a minute.
before I show you my finished series, I want to show you one cool technique I learned from Shelly that's in her book. And here I have kitchen paper towel and I've sewn a grid through the paper towel. Next, I'm spraying it down with my water spritzer until the grid is all wet. And then I took a little pair of sewing scissors and held it together so that I've got the pointy end to scratch out in between each box in the grid. In a moment, you'll see it integrated into some of the pieces. But first, let me show you how the marks I made with those homemade tools ended up into some of the pieces. Thanks so much for watching the video and at the beginning of the video I said if you stay to the end I have a free bonus gift for you. If you head over to my website robinrandolph.com there are two opportunities to subscribe and when you subscribe you can have a download of my favorite go-to art supply list and or you can also get a free copy of my Pure Sauce little PDF download and for some of you who don't know I am the author of several healthy cookbooks and for me food is an art and one of my favorite forms of art so it's another thing I just am offering you guys when you subscribe thanks so much for watching today's video and I just love it when you leave comments some of you have been letting me know that the music has been too loud. I appreciate that. Any and everything you have to share with me as I'm new to doing all of this, I love your feedback and appreciate it so much. Of course, I also so appreciate when you hit the like and subscribe and notification bell and share this channel with others. All right, see you on the next video.